Hey everybody, I'm Barry with Alexander Arms. Today I'm going to show you how to install a 17 HMR upper shown here with the optional mid-length MK10 handguard and the twist fluted barrel onto a standard mil-spec lower receiver. We don't recommend installing the 17 HMR onto anything but a standard mil-spec lower receiver. Not carbon fiber, not polymer, standard aluminum lower receiver. As of mid-April 2014, your HMR kit will include the upper in whatever configuration you've ordered, a mag block, a mag release, a bolt catch filler plate, buffer assembly, and a couple of magazines. If you're planning on using a tactical trigger in your lower receiver, please remember to order the heavy buffer assembly. If you're using a standard mil-spec trigger and hammer, you can get the standard buffer. Also, if you're using a non-collapsible stock, full size, you're going to need to order the little spacer that goes at the back of it. So let's get started. First step, take out the hammer. Just a helpful little hint if you use a tactical trigger on your HMR. It's a rim fire. You have to hit the primer pretty hard. It's a good idea to not bend the hammer spring much. You have to make it smack it really hard in order for it to go off correctly. Next step is take out your bolt catch. Our 17 HMR actually doesn't even use the bolt catch. In fact, it gets in the way. Take out the plunger and the spring as well. Included with your kit is a little filler plate. This is just a cosmetic fix to make it look better since the bolt catch isn't there. Go ahead and put it back in the same hole that the bolt catch was in. Put the roll pin back in place. Next up, go ahead and take out the buffer that's in the buttstock. Next you're going to install a buffer assembly, either a standard or a heavy buffer, again depending on what kind of trigger you have. The rubber end goes toward the back, the metal end goes up front. Apply a little bit of CLP to it before you put it in. And now, you can put your hammer back in. And next, you're going to remove the mag catch. and install the new one that came in your kit. And as always with installing these, make sure that the post is flush with the end of the little button. Okay, next step is gonna to be to install the new mag block. This mag block is designed to reduce the size of the mag well so that the 17 HMR magazine will fit and operate properly. You're gonna need a T-handle Allen key with a long shaft on it and a standard little elbow Allen key. First thing you wanna do is get the mag block and adjust the top screw to the little hole in the back so that it's just barely protruding. The bottom screw needs to be flush with the material. You're going to install it down from the top. You're going to have to push out the mag release button so that it will drop down in place. Take your allen key, put it through the hole in the front of the mag block and get to that set screw on the top. You're going to want to have the set screw so that it's just barely touching the material on the back side of the mag well. This is so that you can slide it down into place with a little bit of friction but not too much. You don't want it to wobble back and forth. This is sometimes a fairly piddly little job, kind of tedious, but it's important to make sure that it operates correctly. Okay, so there we go. Sliding down into place, you're going to push it down until the mag release pushes down into the new mag block. Just like that. Now, go in from the bottom side with your standard Allen key and get that bottom screw. You're gonna tighten it up until it's just barely snug. You don't wanna over tighten this and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, once you have that set, make sure that the mag release still functions. And you can see here it doesn't. Easy to fix. 
take a small uh, soft hammer and tap the bottom. You're moving the mag block up or down ever so slightly until the mag release functions correctly. Then take one of your magazines and make sure that it fits. The reason you don't want to over tighten this bottom screw is because it pushes the mag block up too much into the front of the well. Therefore pinching the magazine a little bit and it doesn't operate very well. You should be able to drop it right out into your hand. One thing to verify on your lower receiver is that the buffer assembly, the outside tube, the stainless steel tube, has to be in contact with the buffer retaining pin. If you can wiggle it back and forth and the buffer assembly that's in the buttstock slides back and forth, or if you can hold it down and gravity is keeping it up against it instead of spring tension, you're going to have problems. It's important that this assembly is all the way forward up against the retaining pin so that the carrier pushes all the way up against the chamber and you don't end up having blowouts. If you do encounter this, go ahead and give us a call. Uh, it is a safety feature, a safety issue, um, and it's something that we can work with you on the phone to try to figure out why it's happening. Do keep in mind that the inside of the buffer moves as well as the outside. It's supposed to be like that, but it's important that it actually stops because of the retaining pin. So there you go. Let's put the upper on. Put the pivot pin in first. Keep in mind that as you try to close it, a lot of times you're gonna to have to push the bolt carrier forward with your thumb. It's uh, spring tension on the extractor, it's normal. It's supposed to be like that. A couple things that may occur, depending on the orientation and make of your lower receiver, is that the ejector may interfere with the bottom side of the bolt carrier. If this does happen, look down the mag well as you're closing it. You can see the extractor. Look at where it's going into, into the little grooves cut into the bottom of the bolt carrier. It's supposed to go right down in between the little grooves. If it's hitting on one side or the other, it's okay. It just means that your lower receiver might be a little bit to the side, one side or the other. If this does occur, it's okay. Take a pair of pliers and very gently encourage your ejector into the correct position. If you push it too much, you can break it. So be gentle. But you can move it slightly so that when you put it back up together, it locks completely. The next step, point the gun up in the air, set it down onto a table to make it easier. Pull back on the charging handle and look into the ejection port. What you're going to see is the ejector sliding out from under the bolt carrier. What you're looking for is to make sure that it's not touching the carrier as it slides back and forth. That'll create friction and make it not work properly. But you want to make sure it's as close as you can get it without actually touching it. So there again, you can carefully adjust it with a pair of pliers. Again, if you force it too much, it'll break. So don't do that. So there you go. The Alexander Arm 17 HMR put onto your lower receiver. We have another video on YouTube uh, helping out with some cleaning issues and some shooting stance issues. Be sure to check that one out. Thanks for watching. Happy shooting and be safe.